of it. On the wall, you'll see the remnants of some white paint. And that's because the street signs were actually painted on the wall from the late 60s because the council got sick and tired of replacing them. After Beatle fans, more of the well kept borrowing them and not bringing them back. So the signs just paint on the wall and people chip away to the heart's content and rise all over it. The only shops want real street signs back two years ago. And eight months ago, they cleaned that one off the wall because they trusted people had stopped taking the street signs. Two down there, been there since two o'clock on Wednesday afternoon. They've actually gone through four signs this week already. <coughs> But if anyone does want to buy an original Penny Lane Road sign, just see Lee. There's two of them in the booster bus. All mail order. He's starting to do a mail order as well. <laughs> Over to the right there, you've got the grounds of Liverpool College. That was one of eight schools attended by Brian Epstein until he was expelled at the age of 10. <laughs> now, as we're driving along the full end of Penny Lane, if you remember back to 1995, a new song and video was released called Free as a Bed. Now the video to Free as a Bed was shot along Penny Lane. So what you see is he left and right coming up, all the shops actually did feature in that video. And also on the right hand side under Jard's Enables, you'll see a big white building, Dovedale Towers. Formerly St Barnabas Church Hall, where the quarry men performed in many a skiffle competition. Actually won quite a few. But also during the 1960s, Freddie Mercury of Queen used to live above there while studying at Liverpool Art College. That little road on the right, Dovedale Road, we can't take the bus down there, but at the far end is Dovedale Primary School. And that was a primary school attended by both John Lennon and George Harrison. did bring you to Smithtown Place. It's still commonly referred to as the Penny Lane area. Now directly ahead of us, what is now Sergeant Pepper's Bistro in the middle of the roundabout, was formerly a bus and tram waiting shelter where those pretty nurses sold poppies from a tray. As we turn in to the right hand side, you can see on the corner is a bank where the banker never wears a Mac in the pouring rain. It's very strange. And behind you, is the barber shop, but we're going to go around there. So I'll point it out as we get around there. There is also a couple of places here, relevant to Beatle history, but not actually mentioned in the song. One of which being Bernardo's to the left there. That was formerly Albert Marion's photography studio. Albert Marion was a very good friend of Brian Epstein, and it was Albert who actually took the first professional publicity photos of the Beatles. And also ahead of us and to the right, St Barnabas Church. In 1954, Paul McCartney was a choir boy at St Barnabas and in the early 1980s Paul's brother Mike got married at that church. Paul was with the best man, public found out about that and gathered around the church. It took the bride over an hour to get into her own wedding. That's because the vicar eventually came out and said look it's the bride's day not McCartney's. Sling it up. At the evening time at the wedding reception Paul sat at the piano entertaining everybody as he does. Another famous person who was at the wedding reception was the comedian Spike Milligan. While Paul's playing the piano Spike leaned over his shoulder and stayed Paul. Isn't it amazing how Ebony and Ivory fit together in such a perfect harmony, side by side on a piano keyboard? Yeah. Next day, Paul went off to Scotland and wrote Ebony and Ivory, <laughs> just from what Spike Milligan had said to him the night before. I said, we're just going to carry on round, and coming up on the left-hand side, you'll see a white-fronted shop called Tony Slavin, ladies and gents hair stylists, which mm, formerly Bialetti's, the barber shop, just there on the left. And the reason Lance Rose about that area, basically that is where they had to meet to get the bus into the city centre when John was in the art college and Paul and George had to live village throughout John's, throughout John's life. So that's where they actually met up there and as she crossed over the road she was killed on the opposite side. The house that John lived in with his Aunt Mimi from 1945 to 1963 is on your left hand side here. And the reason this house has actually got a blue plaque on the wall and George's house hasn't is because the English heritage you give the plaques out will only give a plaque to somebody who's been dead for 20 years. Now the logic behind it is if you still remember after 20 years, you must have been famous. John's bedroom was the little one above the front door, although when the band came around to rehearse, they weren't allowed in the house, the guitars, they were only allowed inside the porch. And that's because Mimi always said to John, the guitar's all very well and good, John, but you'll never make a living out of it. In 1965, John came back to visit Mimi. After fighting his way through the crowd of people who gathered outside, he found Mimi sitting in the kitchen crying. 
And when he walked in, he said to us, you know, what's the matter? She went, I can't put up with these cramps anymore. I want my peace and tranquility back. Johnson, don't worry, I'll take it on holiday. And he took it to a place called Poole in Dorset. Now, as they got to the cottage where they were staying, John showed Mimi inside, told her to have a look round while he brought the luggage in. And as she walked in the house, she found it was decorated beautifully. All the best friends you get at the time. And above the fireplace, there was a big plaque on the wall, and the plaque said, the guitar's all very well and good, John, but you'll never make a living out of it. 